The sea is the cradle of all forms of life. It is believed that over one billion years ago, the first tiny seed of life formed itself in the sea. Countless ages elapsed before this minute seed evolved into innumerable forms of life, and these steadily propagated until they filled the oceans. Some found their way to the land, and then all the continents and islands on Earth came to be populated with forms of life. In this film, we explore the world of microorganisms of the sea with the aid of the microscope. The sun emits intense energy. Its light penetrates the sea and microorganisms within it are sustained by its energy. The sea is filled with these microbes a drop of sea water swarms with life. These are plankton. These are phytoplankton or plant plankton. They vary in size and shape. The smallest is about one one hundredth of a millimeter. Countless numbers of these are drifting in the sea down to some 20 to 30 meters from the surface. The breeze caresses the waves under the steady rays of the sun. The seawater contains various inorganic substances such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, phosphates and nitrates, which nourish plant plankton. Diatoms take in such nourishment and perform photosynthesis with the sunlight, which penetrates the waters. The chlorophyll granules are vigorously at work, performing this delicate task. Here is another plant plankton or diatom. Each one seems to be filled with strength, having absorbed the energy of sunlight. Such substances as carbohydrates, oils and fats are formed within its body. And at night, the diatoms, bursting with energy, begin to divide. They split and split again, and keep on proliferating limitlessly to fill the oceans. The unlimited propagation of plant plankton means an inexhaustible supply of food for marine animal life. Here 
is a kind of animal microbe called foraminifera. It extends cobweb-like pseudopodia to catch diatoms. It sucks the body fluids and digests the nutrients to store the energy of life. is another kind of animal plankton called Noctiluca. It also feeds on diatoms. In this way, plant plankton, filled with the energy of the sun, become sources of energy for animal plankton. What an assortment of animal plankton. Among them we find baby crabs. Some are vigorously thrashing the water to attract food. Why, this fellow looks like a rocket. All lead an active life in shapes and forms best fitted to their environments. This one has a most elaborate form. It's a kind of radiolaria. Another kind. It gathers diatoms by extending its pseudopodia radially. In the marine world of microbes, activity never ceases. This creature swims by stirring its flagella. And this one seems to be jet propelled. Here comes a baby shrimp, rolling its compound eyes. The shallows near the shore. Here too are numerous kinds of microorganisms. These grow at the bottom of the sea. In fact, the whole seabed is alive with various forms of bentonic life.
a colony of moss animals known as Bugula neritina. Like reef coral, a vast number of these, each about one millimeter in size, form a colony. They stretch out their tentacles to catch plant plankton and other drifting microbes. And these are sucked into the mouth. The numerous flagella on the tentacles are a stir to attract food. The moss animals are vigorously digesting the diatoms and absorbing their nutrients. And stock up energy to propagate their offspring. A baby moss animal is born. kinds of life are born in countless numbers. The young grow on their mother's back. We can already recognize their eyes. Eggs are awaiting to be hatched. In this way, the sea is constantly propagating all forms of life, and birth takes place in steady surges. A school of dolphins. Fish in panic try to escape from their larger foes. And though these fish scamper away frantically, they constantly prey on plankton. But in whatever amounts plankton may be eaten by their enemies, these microorganisms keep on increasing under the genial sunshine which penetrates the sea. And all the while, deaths take place in equally vast numbers. A swarm of microbes about to end their life. Death is approaching the plant and animal plankton alike, which once filled the ocean all fresh and vivid. Sooner or later, they will leave the domain of sunlight and the sparkling world of life and fall into the sunless depths of the ocean. The remains of the dead organisms are attached by bacteria and they slowly rot and decompose into lifeless, inorganic matter and dissolve. Thus, 
After death, all organisms in the sea are reduced to water, and as they sink to the bottom, give their substance to plant plankton as its food. Snow falls in the sea, the marine snow. Various kinds of plant and animal plankton, which once lived fresh with the energy given by the sun, sink in a steady fall of marine snow. Since the beginning of life, the seas and oceans have seen this demise of organisms in marine snow. Marine snow falling on a continental shelf. It mixes with the mud on the bed of the sea and piles high in layers. But in the mud which lacks oxygen of the floor of the ocean, bacteria exist. They swarm over the marine snow to devour what little oils and fats are left undecomposed. The marine snow is further decomposed, mixed with mud and turned into oily matter, which is called protopetroleum. This, it is considered, is the origin of crude oil. Through the ages, the mud accumulates on the seabed in layers, hundreds of meters or even thousands of meters thick. Silently, the marine snow continues to fall. On the other hand, the sea has accumulated other forms of sediment. From the formation of continents, great masses of sand and mud carried by the rivers to the sea have accumulated on its floor. Due to the crustal movements of the earth, sometimes layers of mud and sometimes layers of sand were formed alternately. A layer of mud. Now a layer of sand. In the course of millions of years, these layers accumulated in vast numbers, and the oily substances contained in the mud were transformed into crude oil and gas by heat, radioactivity, and catalysis. Meanwhile, movements of the Earth's crust caused these layers to fold, and some of them rose above the sea and became dry land. The crude oil and gas and water contained in the layer of mud were pushed up into the layer of sand above, and were accumulated separately in the anticlines of the folds according to their specific gravities. The sand layers became sandstone strata to serve as natural tanks, and the mud layers above became mudstone strata to function as caps for these tanks.
In this way, crude oil has been accumulated underground in various parts of the world. The oil fields already developed and the zones which are considered to contain oil deposits cover vast areas. These crude oils were formed about 1 million to 250 million years ago. Under the eternal night of stars, the crude oil stored deep in the ground from remote antiquity is now pumped out. And the waste gas is burning furiously over the oil fields of the Middle East. As the gas burns, carbon dioxide is liberated and then dissolves in the sea. This feeds plant plankton, which perform photosynthesis, a grand cycle of the sun's vast energy. The flames soar skywards as the waste gas burns at the oil field. Pipelines across the desert. Enormous quantities of crude oil just pumped out of the ground, flowing along with all its bubbles and impurities. The energy of the sun, which once gave life to tiny organisms in the sea and has lain dormant deep under the ground as crude oil, is now sent to all parts of the world to promote present-day civilization. from various countries gather here to load crude oil. The barren desert, which in the past never attracted attention, is now undergoing a rapid transformation into a center of great activity. the sun and the flames of the waste gas. We have explored the world of microbes in the sea, and in so doing, we have traced back the great cycle of the energy of the sun. Still the sun emits its intense energy, and nature continues its magnificent and limitless cycle. 